Are you tired of juggling separate backend services while managing your Nux projects? With Nux API routes, you can handle server-side logic directly within your Nux application. Its seamless integration cuts down on complexity and boosts your efficiency, enabling you to develop robust applications without switching context or technologies. In View Mastery's Nux API Routes course, will get you set up leveraging API routes, empowering you to streamline your workflow and enhance your development capabilities. We'll cover how to create API routes, integrate them into components, set up RESTful routes, and implement a mutation flow that connects the front end and the back end. We'll be learning all of these topics by working on a sample application. If you've taken our real world Nux 3 course, this app and its code base will be very familiar to you. We'll be extending onto what we built in that course. Let's take a look at how the app functions. The homepage shows a bunch of posts. We can click on more to go to the post details page, which shows the content of that post. By clicking on a category, you'll be taken to the category page where all the posts belonging to that category are displayed. Click on the categories link on the navigation bar, and you'll be taken to the categories page where it shows a list of categories. Click on any one of these items and you'll get to a category page again, displaying the related posts. You can download the code from GitHub. In the code, you'll find the four pages defined under the pages folder. The code comes with the mock JSON API that provides the data that these components need. You have to start this mock API server before starting the app server. Now we can start the app server with the usual command. The mock API will be running at localhost 3001 and the app will be running at localhost 3000. But when we're fetching data in the component, we don't need the actual port number. We just use a function like get post URL to get the URL that we can fetch the data from. These URL functions are prepared in the files under the data folder. The URL function returns the URL. And I'm using the use fetch composable in the page component to fetch the data from a URL. If any of this feels overwhelming to you, we recommend first checking out the real world Nux 3 course on our platform. This is the general pattern for fetching data that we need for the page. But depending on what and where the data source is, this could be a problem security wise. When you fetch data from an API in a page component, the actual API URL will be exposed on the front end. Anyone would be able to see this using the browser DevTools. This means if you're fetching from an external API service that requires a secret key, that will be exposed as well. If we want to keep the information about any external API hidden, we have to add Nux API routes into our setup. We'll start doing that in the next lesson. And in the lessons after that, we'll introduce server routes and RESTful routes. Eventually, we'll be able to implement a form for creating comments. In the previous lesson, we talked about the problem of fetching data from our API directly in the components. This could expose sensitive API information to the front end. One way to fix this is to create an internal API with Nux API routes, which will in turn fetch data from the original API. In our case, that's the mock API. That way, any information about the original API can still be hidden. To set up a Nux API route, we just have to create an API folder inside the server folder, and then create a file inside the API folder. We're naming it post with square bracket because it's a dynamic segment parameter. Create an event handler here. And then we can get the post slug value through the event parameter. We can return a promise object or a JSON-like object from this function. We're going to use the dollar sign fetch function and the get post details URL function to fetch the data from the mock API. You will be able to access this API route through the URL API slash postlog. 
Nuxt API routes are also using file-based routing. So if we want the URL to be API slash post slash post slug, we can just create a folder called post and drop this file inside that folder. Unlike use fetch, the dollar sign fetch function is not optimized for SSR. So if you use it in place of use fetch in the page components, you'll be fetching the same data twice. But if you want to make a fetch only on the client side or only on the server side, like what we're doing here, dollar sign fetch is what you should use. Now back in the page component, we can use use fetch to fetch from the new API route that we just created. So we don't need the get post details URL import in here anymore. Basically, we're calling the Nux API, which in turn calls the mock API that has the data. You might be wondering, since it's making two hops to get to the data, isn't this slow? It depends on how the page is loaded. Is it loaded as the initial page or is it loaded through a page transition? For the initial page load, the page component is rendered on the server. Use fetch doesn't make an API call to the API route. It would just call it as a function. So there's no performance implication on initial page load. An API call is only needed for the mock API. But for page transition, use fetch will be fetching from the client side. It would indeed be making an actual API call from the client side to access the API route. In addition to the mock API call, two hops will be required to get to the actual data, so it will be as slow as it sounds. In summary, initial page load will not make a difference, but page transition will be slower. If you have to use Nux API routes in your application, just keep this in mind. Use pure SPAR or SSR rendering only if you're using a local data source, so there's no second hop or if you have to use an external data source, use it with ISR, SWR, or SSG. The two hops will take place at build time or in the background, so the user would not have to wait. Instead, they will be merged into one hop to get the cached page from the server. Nux API routes can also give you a potential performance boost because the packages or modules that you consume only in your API routes will not need to be bundled was sent to the client side. So it's a powerful tool. You just have to work with the trade-off. Instead of setting the type on the data through use fetch, we can just set the type in the API route. Set the type with the dollar sign fetch function. Now in the page component, we don't need to provide the type information but the data we get back here is still correctly typed. As an exercise, you can apply the same pattern on the other three pages to create the corresponding API route. In the next lesson, I'll show you what they look like. And we'll also create a new composable to make it easier to use API routes in our pages.